Hello. In this video, I would like to demonstrate how to download JDK 8, that is Java SE 8.0, and then how to write a simple Java program which doesn't do anything significant, it just says hello, and then how to compile the program and run it. This is to get you started with Java and as you know even thousand miles journey starts with a step forward and this is that step forward let's first go to oracle.com and go to download section in this here is the downloads and in the downloads if you go to popular downloads you find java se click on that and you're getting java se and netbeans NetBeans is a wonderful IDE. Uh, you can use it to compile, run your programs. But to get started, I would like to use simple JDK without NetBeans. So I go with Java here. And right now the latest version is uh, Java 8 update 60. Well, it doesn't matter. Whatever is the latest, you download that. So click on this and it is giving you the options available. And if you see, these are the options available. Find out what is your platform. I'm using Windows 64-bit operating system. So this is what I have to download. You find out which is relevant to you, go ahead with that. And you need to accept a license agreement. And then you have to click on this. And this will download the software. And this is 186 MB. So I'm downloading that into some folder. Well, actually, I want to download that to C drive and Java folder. So click on save, it will be downloaded. And then once it is downloaded, we'll get to installation, which is pretty simple. But during this process, you might be asked to sign in. And I already signed in. So you see, this is where I already logged into oracle.com. But if you did not log in and if you ask you to log in, then log in. And if you don't have an account, no worries. You can create an account and you can then log in. It's all free. Well, once it's downloaded, then we'll install that. But in the meantime, we'll write a small Java program. So this is a very small Java program. And I'm talking about a small Java program and I'm using Notepad to create this program because Notepad is an editor available in Windows by default. You don't have to know everything about this program because this is driven by classes and you may not be aware of all that at the beginning of your journey. Well, if you know it, well and good. Otherwise, you don't need to worry about knowing everything let's look at this in Java program you need to have main function but this main function is not like the main function of C it has certain things before that and it also has a mandatory parameter so just put those keywords even though you don't really know what they are and this you must be knowing it says main doesn't return anything and then every java program must have a class so this is the class named as hello any name will do but as this is hello world program i'm calling it as hello and also make sure you give those keywords main cannot be on its own it has to be inside a class so we are keeping it in the class called hello and inside the main all that i want to do is print a message so I'm using print ln, which is to print a line and this is to print a line and this is the string I want to print and this is to be system.out.println and this simply means we want to print a line and once you get into object oriented programming and library of Java you'll get to know what is what so here we are this is all that you need to create to get started well 
I got the software uh, downloaded. I'm going to install that software. So let's go to the folder where we have the software. Well, I do not wait for the software to be downloaded. I already have the software, so I'm going to show you how to install that software. So here we are. One minute. Well, there we are. Uh, by the way, I'm using Windows 10. So this is uh, the version I'm using. So here is the software. And I'm using uh, the version that is meant for Windows 64-bit. And if you are using Windows 32-bit, don't be confused. This is what you need to download. Okay, it's called as i586. Some get confused. They don't know which version is meant for 32 and this is the one for 32 so you need to down double click on this in order to install the software and this is uh, update 45 but the latest is uh, update 60 okay so if you go back to your uh, C drive because uh, I'm having that installed or uh, downloaded already so it's almost ready so I'm going there and I'm going to start the download and also, in the meantime, I saved this program with the name hello.java. Remember, it should, be named, it should be named as hello.java, not something else. Because there is a rule that says the file name and the class name must be same. Remember, the file name and class name must be exactly the same. So that's the reason why I'm giving both of them the same. Of course, uh, the file name is a hello.java. Now coming here, so here is my JDK downloaded, the update 60, and I double click on that, and it's asking me whether I want to proceed, I say yes, and then the installation begins. It's going to start. Well, there it is. The installation uh, started. And then it gives you a screen like this and say next. And this is where I want you to change the directory into which it is installing. For beginners, I do suggest you change the directory. It is suggesting you install that into this directory. But I suggest you change it to something else. So I click on change. And then I'm saying I would like to uh, change this to something like C colon backslash JDK 8. Well, whether I say JDK or Java SE, uh, it all means the same. Well, JDK, by the way, is standing for Java Development Kit. Java SE means Java Standard Edition. Now click on OK and click on Next. Well, you don't change any of those things there. Just click on Next and it's installing JDK or Java SE into that folder. It takes a little time and keep an eye on the installation so that you get some important messages and that too we are installing 64-bit JDK into Windows system. Well though I'm using Windows 10 you can use any version of Windows. It's not an issue. So it takes a little time to install. Once JDK is installed, then it will start installing what is called as JRE, Java Runtime Environment. And it will ask you where to install that. You just accept the default and you can proceed. So it's almost done. And once it is done, it will give you one more prompt. And that prompt says, where you want to install or, or is, it gives the name of the folder where it is going to install JRE. So just wait for a second and that dialog box will pop up.
Well, in the meantime, uh, I would like to start my command prompt. So you might be knowing how to bring the command prompt. So this is my command prompt. I have to go to this command prompt. And here, let's go to the folder where we saved our program. So I'm saying cd backslash to go to root directory in C drive. Then I go to Java folder. And this is where I saved my program. I have the program called uh, hello.java. And also, of course, we have downloaded the JDK into it. So hello.java is here. And now we need to compile the program. But before that, so here it is. It's asking uh, where you want to install your JRE. You can see here it's talking about uh, JRE. Well, you don't have to change anything. Just click on next and it is going to install that. So here it is. So once it is done, you have to see a folder called JDK8 in C drive. In that you find the bin directory and in the bin directory you find some exe files. So once it is done, I'll take you there. So here is my command prompt. First of all, I have my hello.java here. Always confirm what you are about to compile is really present. And once it is present, then we can start the compilation process. Well, in the meantime, this is done. And we need to now proceed to the next step. Okay, you can download API documentation, other things. On some other day, you can do that. For now, just close it. You're done with the installation. Now, go to the drive, C drive, Java. As I told you, you can also go and check whether your JDK is really having what we want. So your JDK 8 is supposed to have a bin directory. So just check whether you have the bin directory. Well, it is there, the bin directory there. And then go to bin directory and you need to find two very important files. And if those two files are present, it means the job is done. So here are those two files, java c.exe, java.exe. Now let's go and compile our program. So let's go back to our folder that is Java. And this is where we have hello.java. But before we proceed with compilation, we need to inform operating system using path command where it finds uh, the Java compiler. So set the path in this way, path c colon backslash jdk8 backslash bin because this is the folder where you find those exe files. And now you go and say java c hello dot java. This is how you compile a java program. Remember we already have that program saved. So here is my program and let's keep them side by side. So here is my program and nothing really great about it, but getting started is always great. So compile the program. Well, it's done and go and check. And as you can see, you are having hello.class created. This is called the bytecode. So once bytecode is ready, we're all set to run it. So let's go and say Java hello only the class name is to be given whatever class name you have given in the program make sure the same you give here and press enter key and it is running and you get the message so let's just revise quickly install java se 8 first download by going to oracle.com install it and download the appropriate version depending on your operating system then install it into any directory of your choice. I prefer C colon backslash JDK8. I think for beginners, that is uh, the easiest uh, way to handle. Then create a program. And if you have any typos, then of course compiler will comply. You can uh, then fix them. But if all is fine, then you'll get the bytecode once you compile the program. 
So during the compilation, there are three important steps. So here are those three steps. Set the path first. Be very careful with the path. Make sure no typos. And then you compile the program. This is how you compile. And then you run the program. And this is how it is done. Okay. So hope that is of some use to you. All the very best for your journey. Thank you.